busted. Hello and thanks for staying with us. Welcome to Political Platform on Repa Radio and AIT Abuja and AIT International. My name is Amitya Napwe. After a long public holiday, Nigerians are back to work uh, to continue to uh, sustain their livelihood. But while you were on holiday, the APC led federal government and the main opposition party PDP were quarreling over the release of alleged uh, looters list. Uh, the federal government twice uh, within a, a, few, a spate of two days uh, released two different lists of the names of people they claim they stole from the treasury uh, with a former aide of President Gulag, Jonathan Remo, also releasing uh, his own list, uh, a long list of APC uh, members who are, he alleged also uh, helped themselves uh, to our uh, common patrimony. Of course, while that is going on, a critical thing was happening in the judiciary, something that has to be uh, has to do with the success or failure of prosecution of anti-corruption cases in the courts. Uh, remember, the National Judicial Council set up a team headed by retired Justice Suleiman Galadima to monitor corruption cases across the country. The team has since uh, set to work and has been meeting judges handling corruption cases. They met those in Lagos. And uh, across the country, they have plans to meet every other uh, judge handling corruption cases across the country. And the main reason is to hear from them uh, the reasons why these anti-corruption cases are being lost at will and delayed unnecessarily. And from what newspapers, uh, some newspapers reported uh, this morning, the judges heaped the blame on the doorsteps of the prosecuting teams, the prosecuting officials. They accused them of not doing diligent prosecution. They also accused the anti-corruption agencies of doing short investigation and uh, rushing to court uh, when they don't have a watertight case and not preparing well. The judges told these committee members that they are hamstrung. They can uh, be seen to be arguing cases uh, in favor of the anti-corruption uh, anti agencies when they bring these cases to court. That is one area we must channel our attention to and not to be uh, misguided by this uh, issue of a release of a uh, alleged looters uh, list or not. We have to take a look at the structural problems uh, that are bedeviling the prosecution of uh, cases, anti-corruption cases in court. I hope this team moves around to get the views of judges and come up with recommendations with the judiciary headed by uh, Justice Walter Naim, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, will implement so that uh, we'll begin to get results in cases. And the House Committee uh, set up by uh, the House to investigate the uh, circumstances surrounding the reinstatement of, the, of Abdul Rashid Mena into the civil service has turned this report and the contents are everywhere uh, for everybody to see. I recall the President uh, issued uh, uh, some query to the head of service of the Federation to explain uh, the circumstances uh, surrounding the, uh, Mena's uh, reinstatement and she did that almost uh, immediately. The uh, issue, the report is still with the president, but we have not heard anything from it. Is it that it has been swept under the carpet, but the House has moved uh, quicker than the executive by turning in his report, and it indicted whole scale of uh, the uh, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of uh, Justice uh, uh, talking about Abubakar Malami. They describe him as the architect of the entire saga, when they say architect, you know what they mean? The planner, the designer, and the executor. They said the Attorney General pressured officials to force order, uh, to force them into uh, a acting action on the restatement of Abubakar Malami. Of course, uh, the committee also uh, inducted the permanent secretary in the Minister of Interior Engineer Abubakar Magaji for reinstating me now without getting clearance from the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. The same thing with Civil Service Commission 
uh, the committee accused it of uh, allowing itself, itself to be influenced and pressurized uh, by the Attorney General of the Federation that they should have stuck to their constitutionally assigned roles, put their feet down, and resist pressures even from political offices. But the committee said uh, some other persons uh, mentioned in the whole saga, including uh, the head of service of the Federation, the immigration, ICP, and EFCC, uh, were not uh, indicted and that they did, uh, they don't have anything to do with that saga. My whole colleague are here, the whole house is here with me. Let's start from Adebayo Bodore. Well, uh, Amishi, uh, very sad and choking. Obudu at a very old age. We lost uh, uh, Winnie Mandela uh, yesterday. She died at 81. And uh, it's, it's one woman that, uh, in spite of her later year travails, I remove her as, uh, as, uh, from a ministerial position. The divorce of uh, with uh, the, the great Nelson Mandela. One thing you can take away is that she stood solidly for her husband and defended and promoted uh, his ideals while Mandela was uh, was uh, in prison. And for a woman who, for 27 years, uh, did not had the fortune, the benefit of enjoying. Uh, Marita Bliss, you, you will probably you will, you will doff your heart for, for her, for the role she played. I think her greatest legacy is that she's one who boldly demonstrated commitment to the cause of humanity, who boldly defended the rights of women, who boldly fought for equality, justice, and an end to discrimination in South Africa. There is no way the history of South Africa will be completed without her occupying a very, very prominent place. She, yes, she was divorced. There was the couple divorced, but she never divorced from the ideas she stood for in her lifetime. Well, we'll be bringing, uh, bringing in a diet Hassan of the Center for Democracy and Development uh, to offer us uh, uh, more explanations on the life and times of uh, Winnie Mandela, who died at 81. Ijoma Samo is also in the studio. Thank you, Amechi. Uh, Winnie Mandela's life is an example that all African women should emulate uh, because there's something I picked from the story uh, life and times of that woman uh, despite the fact that um, she was divorced uh, and her husband still believed in her the man stood for her the man because both of them believed in one cause they fought for humanity so if we can have courageous women like that despite the problems she went through at a point there were allegations surrounding her allegations that she killed somebody Allegations of murder, her bodyguard, allega yes, her case. bodyguard. Allegations of even uh, uh, going out of her marital uh, uh, vows. These I things, did, yes, these things did not shake this woman. She stood for what she believed. Do we still have women like that in Africa, even in Nigeria? If we have such, we will not be going through what we are going to because we have people to run to when we have challenges. We also have a Shola Jai Simi in the studio with us. Well, I met you, um, Winnie Mandela at 81, <clears throat> about turning 82. She passed. And when the story broke yesterday in the afternoon, uh, it was a very shocking one for me. Because uh, I had also heard that she, ha she had been ill for a while, but um, passing on at that age, um, a grand old age anyway, four, four scores, as I said. Um, the people of, uh, of uh, South Africa are mourning, and President Cyril Ramaphosa has said by the 14th of this month, she will be buried. A state funeral. That's what South Africa has promised Winnie Mandela. Okay, a uh, very uh, great loss for Africa. Ujue J is also in the studio. I dove my heart for Winnie Mandela, a woman, a great woman. She did not just come to the world and pass through like, uh, you know, an ordinary mortal, but she stamped her footprints on the sands of time. A woman who stood by her husband, even as a very young lady, when other women would have been so emotionally uh, would have been so emotionally battered, or maybe even yearning for. Uh, fulfillment of uh, her conjugal rights and all. She stood by her husband 27 years of living without that man. 27 years of being her hounded, harassed by the authorities, but she stood firm by her husband. She stood firm by South Africans. She stood firm by 
uh, what she believed in and she kept a home i think that's the greatest part of it that she kept the home front intact for that man to come out of prison after 25 years to meet a home and a family i think that's the best thing that a woman could do for a man and she did it and that is where i have the greatest respect for winnie mandela like onye kawenu hey winnie mandela Mother Africa. You can't take that away from her. Yes, Mother Africa. Musafa Mohammed uh, completes our number. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, I uh, will take your mails as we get uh, plans prepared to uh, bring in a diet. Hassan to continue from where Uju left it. We'll continue to celebrate the loss of a great icon in Africa. But then let's share some of uh, your mails. Hello and welcome to the mail segment. I'm Usai Tinyari. And I'm um, Amaka Okoro. Welcome. We begin with reactions to the list of looters that was released by the federal government. Monday Ame in Abuja says, the criticism that greeted the just released names of looters from the mails of some contributors yesterday on your program was totally uncalled for. I think that rather than vilify or crucify the federal government, it, de it deserves commendation for taking this bold step of naming and shaming those who looted our common patrimony with facts and figures. In any case, the federal government is simply responding to a challenge thrown at it by the opposition. Similarly, same Nigerians that were mounting pressure on the federal government to release the much talked about list of looters are the very one criticizing it. And this goes to show how sentimental and partisan some of us can be. Well, if the federal government refused to release the list, people will talk. Now that it formally released the list, the talk continues. I call on all Nigerians, irrespective of religion and political ideology or differences, to be patriotic and join hands together in order to move our country to the greater heights of development and national cohesion. Finally, fighting corruption is a collective responsibility. Hence, all hands must be on deck to kill corruption before corruption kills Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. Light Shaibu Abdullahi from Jukwe in Abuja says, The move by Buhari led administration to publish more names of those who looted Nigeria's funds is a welcome development. The most dramatic and interesting part of this exercise is the move by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as a party to also publish names of those they are alleged to be corrupt, serving under President Muhammad Buhari's government. However, this initiative will help to expose those who halted positive developments in Nigeria. But, the, but there are questions begging for answers. One, how many, how much have we recovered so far? Two, how many cases do we have pending in court? Three, why are we not prosecuting these alleged looters? And finally, what do we intend to do with the recovered funds? Nigerians are anxiously waiting for the answers to these questions because transparency and accountability are key to national development. May God bless my country. More reactions. Collins Eze in Abuja says, Dear crew, now that the second part of the Almighty Looters list has been released, what next? The same list they refused to release even, with a, even when a court ordered them to do so. However, what has this got to do with the obvious hunger, insecurity, lack of jobs and basic amenities that have bedeviled our nation like never before? It's obvious that this current administration is looking for any means possible to clear their already battered image and the first step should have been to start working on those promises made during their campaign. While I support the fight against corruption, let it not be politicized as their institutions empowered to carry out investigations, trial and conviction. If this media trial has not worked since 2015, it definitely will not work now. Let there be prosecution and conviction to back up this list. God bless Nigeria. And on recent comments by President Obasanjo Kolade Adelaye from Ijushaga in Lagos State says, I'm so surprised that former President Obasanjo has the moral right to indict any government in the country when he failed to find ways and direction to the country while in power. The clear example is Lagos and Nigeria. Baba was busy with tenure elongation when he was supposed to groom who will buy his philosophy. He should take a back seat. We are tired of him. That's it on the mail segments. Continue to send your thoughts and suggestions to politicalplatform at yahoo.com. 
Thank you so much uh, for those mails. Uh, let's quickly uh, welcome Idayat Hassan uh, of the Center for Democracy and Development. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us and for waiting patiently for us. Well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, it's all about Winnie Mandela, 81, an icon, uh, one woman whose uh, place in history in Africa has been assured and whose place uh, in the history of South Africa and the anti-apartheid anti struggle uh, well embedded uh, in our memory. How do you uh, see her demise after it won glorious years on it? Uh, it's actually a sad day for all women and all um, Pan-Africanists in Africa and in the world all over because Winnie has actually added so much value fighting appetite for over close to 38 years. She was there as an anti apartheid uh, fighter. She fought for justice, she fought for equity, and she also stood by a husband who, we, of course, who she never had enough time with immediately after they were married. He went to jail. So she's actually a symbol of excellence. She's somebody that, no matter what has actually happened, in the last days, she will be celebrated because she fought for what she believed in. Yes, she says she's a symbol of excellence. You know, in Africa, we have this culture of not talking ill of the dead, but there are some uh, some of her lifestyle that people quiz on, even when she was alive. Uh, her football club, and which many believe was a, a one group that went beyond the law in even a killing allegedly some uh, political opponents and some of her uh, uh, issues uh, revolving has failed marriage. Maybe these were not strong enough to wipe away the good actions uh, that she has beaten while on earth. Exactly. We have to understand that the, if chal the issue of, of course, infidelity may not be strong enough to actually wipe out what she, she stood for, really. We all, she had her flaws, and I think it's one that um, South Africans actually had to deal with and live with. Yeah, uh, let's look at uh, Africa, uh, a country that uh, in many countries, the women in many countries of Africa, currently they are still involved deeply in fighting for equality, in fighting for justice and uh, perceive uh, marginalization. What do we take away from the struggle of uh, of uh, Winnie Mandela for women in South Africa? Uh, it's not for women in Africa. I think it's a pointer. It shows us that you can actually get what you want because if she fought, and at the end of that years, over thirty years actually, like thirty eight years, they were able to get a free. Actually, the symbol. She was the symbol. She took on. She carried on when her husband was in prison at that point in time. So it tells us that it's not a journey of a day. It's a journey that might take decades. But actually, we can get there if we really want it. How, how, how do we change the activism of uh, uh, our own women looking at Winnie Mandela? Here, uh, we make our women end up, you know, asking for free slots in parties like women leader, uh, 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 you know, uh, allocation of particular positions instead of struggling to get it like the men do. Uh, we make them, you know, clap and sing and then the soft landing. How do we make all our women here to be like Gambo Sawaba or Blessed Memory, Johnson Salif of Liberia? How do we and, and compete with the men? Compete with the men. And I think it's the narrative is wrong to say it is the woman that is actually begging for the farm. What we should acknowledge is that it is patriarchy that is actually pushing women behind. It is patriarchy, it is the culture, and the place of money in politics. Every election, up to now, there are different platforms coming up. Women for women, women, feminist movement. Everybody is working very hard to make sure they participate in the 2019 elections. But eventually, when the elections come, how many women will participate? How many, how many, the big parties, the two big parties, how many women will they field? And while the other smaller parties will field a lot of women, actually, not just as vice, but how many will Nigerians actually vote for? It's not a lack of capacity, really, because there are lots of capable women who are able to do the work. But it is what the nation, the culture, the men have actually put in the place to stop women 
from being actively involved in the political process, which is actually sad. It's less than 6% in parliament, representation in parliament in Nigeria. And places like Rwanda, Rwanda has the highest in the world, 42.3%. Uh, apart from political positions, uh, what is hindering African women, especially in Nigeria, from coming out to fight for what they believe, uh, from fighting for injustice, fighting for inhumanity, uh, like um, what uh, Obia Izekwesili is doing? Do we have women with strong will in Nigeria that can speak the truth? There are lots of women with strong will. There are lots of women, both young and old, doing great things at all levels the challenge remains that the culture the religion even the media has to the challenge where their voice is not heard fair there are even lots of them on the same social media or basically as utilized to actually get there there are lots of women actually see i shall say they bring back our movement where who are actually talking in terms of social issues there are women in different corners of this world, work, of Nigeria, working on community level issues, working on policy, but how many of them do have media assets? Then how many of them do their families support them the way they support women in other parts of the world? Thank you so much, uh, Idayat Hassan, for your time. We do appreciate. Oh, thank you very much. Idayat Hassan uh, is a uh, of the Center for Democracy and Development. She's actually the director. OBJ at it again. Uh, you recall former President Obasanjo has a history of uh, criticizing uh, those he helped to power and those uh, he uh, left uh, the presidency for. He did not start today and it's not the first time he's criticizing President Muhammad Buhari. Yesterday in Abia Guta wide uh, having a session uh, with uh, some young professionals, uh, the former president again hit at the incumbent president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, saying he has failed uh, in all aspects of governance. He uh, likened uh, his uh, uh, re-election be to a practice they usually uh, imbibe in the military that you don't reinforce failure if you go for a mission or you employ a particular tactics it fails you abandon it you look for new one it's the same thing he told nigerians yesterday don't reinforce failure there's a need for a new government but he says that new government may not will not come from pdp uh, for those in pdp that will rejoice over the criticisms of the president by obasanjo he said as far as he's concerned the, both the pdp and the apc are no good party and they will not lead nigeria to El Dorado. yeah but uh, the presidential spokesman femi Adishina, uh responded swiftly uh he said there is nothing new in uh, obasanjo's uh, statement um, or pronouncement and that the statement uh, issued by the Minister of Information, uh, Lai Mohammed, immediately released his 13-page uh, letter in uh, January, uh, seems to have uh, uh, cleared the president of uh, no performance, and that President Buhari will not, uh, has never and will not uh, engage uh, President Obasanjo on such issues. And, uh, well, it's a game of policies, whether he engages or does not engage the issues are in public domain. If I were in the shoes of the authorities, I mean, considering that uh, Obasanjo, no, no matter whether you hate or love him, whenever he speaks, there's a bit of substance or there's substance in what he says. So you look for that which adequately addresses the situation that you find yourself. Take the positive part of whatever he says. For instance, if somebody challenges me and tells me that I'm not doing well, I will try to do far better than I am doing, you know, so that it's we get to the point where beyond all convictions, it will be obvious that I have done well. For me, it's a challenge to do better. I think uh, Amechi, the, 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 the former president, is actually doing what Nigerians should be doing, asking whether those we elected to the presidency or the national assembly or the various state governors have fulfilled their campaign promises everybody is talking about 2019 what about the promises for good roads healthcare electricity uh, education obasanjo actually should not be the one you know challenging the present government the nigerian electorate have the duty to stand up to
to really challenge. The truth of the matter is, no matter whom you love, if he has not delivered on his campaign promises, there is no point of going to either campaign for that person or vote for that person. Already, you know, the campaign for 2019 has started indirectly, even though he officially it has it, not been yeah. declared. Yes. But if you look at Obasanjo, former president, a two times president, he's still enjoying the comfort of office. He has a lot of wealth. He doesn't care about power failure because he can afford to run generators. He can afford to feed himself. But there are so many Nigerians who cannot feed, their children cannot go to school, they can't pay medical bills. So the Nigerian electorate must take the gauntlet. Amechi, I, would like, I always want to ask the former president, you said the power will not come from the PDP, neither is any person coming from the he APC. Said if if he, 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 your five fingers are, if you have, if you're a leper, it's not all your five he, fingers that will be le leprous. All you need to do is pluck take them away out. the fingers that are not leprous on the left one, that's the APC, and on the right one from PDP, and let them the, move the into new, his the new movement. The new movement is talking about, is he not inviting some of these politicians that had something to do with APC and PDP? Who are the fresh blood that the former president is talking about? Do we have them? Uh, uh, Would they the, give the, them opportunity? In Ebola, and there was one finger uh, gets oh, into contact it touches with, uh, the rest. It smears the so, so who, who are the new ones he said we should vote for? I still, I'm still waiting. Is, is it the ones we have seen that were part of the a new the, Nigeria movement that we are solidly part of the APC and PDP, Shola? Exactly. <laughs> and that's the point I was trying to make about the fact that looking at uh, the membership of the political parties, especially the major one, the ruling and the main opposition, you find uh, people who have cross-carpeted yeah. from one party to the other, like they say, there's a phrase I know, even as a young boy in government of those days, there's this phrase that goes, there are some people, they are members of AJIP. What is AJIP? Any government in power. So we just need to keep on appraising the situation. But clearly, I think the measured response of the presidency, in my view, it's fine. Because yeah, the president... Said, yeah, there's nothing yeah. new coming from exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah. The president had, uh, the former president had, had written a letter before, very, you know, measured response. This time they are saying, look, nothing new so uh, I, I i think that uh, you know like i said earlier let's take the good in what he's saying i i am happy that a lot of young persons are coming out now to form political parties and you're not just any kind of young people you're talking of achievers achievers are that are young achievers that have been able you know that have ideas that can take this nation to the next level if we can't look to the old we can look to the new well former president uh, military president ibrahim babangida recently was it two days ago renewed yeah. uh, his call for new brit politicians uh, to uh, yeah to join the fair just uh, reinforcing what he said the other day that the president should uh, go out of uh, the ring and go and enjoy his own uh, uh, retirement, uh, reinforcing it. And here is Obasanjo also reinforcing his call on the president uh, not to try to re uh, seek a re religion because he has failed. Uh, within uh, this period, we have seen these two former uh, heads of state reinforce what they have already said. But uh, we have well, always advised former president Obasanjo, it appears uh, he's always interested on in producing the next president. And he mm -hmm. says, is the attitude, typical atti attitude of a politician. A statesman, a real statesman, thinks about the next generation and we have challenged him and we have seen that there is no new person that you can come uh, that can, you take away from pdp and apc that will give you something different they are all of the same order we should talk about restructuring the nation uh, change the structure the base that produces these bad politicians that what obasanjo should be spending the rest of his life on trying to uh, bring a new nigeria it's all about a new generation and that's uh, the uh, bedrock of uh, statesman. The much you can take on today's edition when we come back Wednesday, uh, more reports and analysis on behalf of the crew. Have a nice day. My name is Amitya Nakwe. Busted.